today we're going to talk a little bit about, and maybe more importantly, or more specifically, the idea of a curved waistband versus a straight waistband. I think, at least in the circles that I am in online, there is this sort of notion that curved waistbands are better than straight waistbands, or it indicates a pattern is better drafted. And I just don't think it has anything to do with that. In my opinion, the type of waistband, the shape of the waistband that you should be using depends completely on where on your body that waistband is going to hit. And that is so perfectly illustrated using my ditto form. So as you can see here, this is my body. This is my ditto form. Uh, which is an exact replica of my body. I went in, I got a 3D scan, and now I have a way where I can fit things on my body easily, accurately, without like some sort of like specialty in yoga. <laughs> um, but it's a really great way to show you guys too, sort of the difference between a straight and a curved waistband. The body, as you can see, at least mine, um, as at the natural waist, which is where this waistband is sitting, it's this line right here, is curved. I do have a very curvy body. It gets more curved though, below the waist than it does at the waist. Typically at your waist, no matter what shape you are, pear, hourglass, inverted triangle, upside down unicorn, whatever it is, um, you have sort of flatter part or straighter part of your body um, at your natural waist, which is why a straight waistband typically fits better than a curved waistband. If I were to put this waistband down lower where there are naturally more curves to the side of the body, then a curved waistband would certainly fit better. So let's take a closer look at each of these options. Like I said, I have the curved waistband here and this pattern is simplicity 9267 it is a really kind of simple basic straightforward button front skirt so it is a curved waistband and this is what happens with curved waistbands on a straighter part of your body up here right here there is so much extra ease like a lot of extra each. And you can also see because we have these like super big seam allowances, I folded them up from the bottom, but they create like this, I don't know, there's like a bucket effect. There's like a lot, a lot, a lot of already extra ease under here. And the seam allowance, even whenever you trim it back, is still going to create like these really kind of weird puckers versus the straight waistband. So I literally just cut this waistband out of a straight piece of tracing paper. I'm going to take that out. So we'll talk about that in a second here and wrapped it around my body, putting the, um, seam line at my natural waist or yeah, at my natural waistline, which is this dark ribbon here. And you can see with this, that it still ends up being a little bit big, but it's not big on the bottom. Instead, it's big on the top, which is so interesting because the curved waistband is smaller at this top line than it is at the bottom seam line, but it's almost like too much here, not enough here. Whereas for me with the straight waistband, it's uh, too much at the top and not enough at the bottom. So I am almost going to be making like a hybrid of the two where I take out this small, small, small little pleat that ends up being I'm going to say roughly a quarter inch, so a half inch total pleat from there to there, so a half an inch. So I'm going to create my own little curve that is much less curvy than this and curved to exactly fit my body, which is the whole point. I think assuming that a curved waistband is going to fit every body um, is very confident <laughs> of a designer. I think the amount of curve is so unique to each person, especially at the natural waist. As we start to go down into the curves of the body, maybe a little bit less so, but at the natural waist, I don't think we need nearly as much curve as some of the pattern designers are giving us. So I would much rather just take a straight piece of tracing paper, wrap it around my body, 
and then take out the small, small little wedge that I have to take out. And now I have a custom waistband that is made exactly for the shapes and the curves that I have. So the next time you come across a pattern that has a curved waistband or a straight waistband for that matter, try to reserve any judgment until you can either tissue fit or muslin that particular waistband. Of course, like I said in the beginning, it definitely depends on where that waistband is sitting on your body. And if it's higher up at your natural waist, it's gonna naturally need to be a little bit flatter. That's just how our bodies are made. If it's lower on the waist, then you're gonna have a little bit more curves there. Making a custom waistband using a ditto form or even just wrapping some tissue paper around your body is not difficult to do at all. Um, so I encourage you to kind of just maybe like forget about whatever waistband the pattern designer um, has included and just start making your own every single time. You'll obviously have a much better fit in the end because it was truly made for you. I mean, think about it. If we're having to make bust adjustment, hips adjustments, grading out here and there, then why aren't we doing the same thing with our waistbands? They deserve just as much attention as any other part of our body in order to get great, great fit. So, so don't forget to check out the description box. I have a link where you can check out Dudo Form. She is actively on the road doing scans, different parts of the country, different times of the year. So I'm going to link you to her schedule. Of course, if your city is not on that schedule, reach out to her anyways and let her know that you are interested because she will plan a trip around your area if there are enough of you that have expressed interest. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Happy waistband making and I'll see you very soon. Bye.